Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha perspective is in loving memory of my grandfather, Yaakov Yesep ben Arya Leib, Edward ben Fraim, Shlomo ben Edward, Yerachmel Daniel ben Gedalia, and Tzvi ben Yosef. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Parsha perspective is in honor of the Rafua Shalema of Rav Amita ben Shoshana, Shaul ben Brita, and Sesel ben Sal ben Batya. May they have a complete and speedy recovery. This week's Parsha perspective is dedicated in honor of the birthday of Yael Liskevich. May Hashem bless her and her husband Aaron with a year of happiness, success, and health. Parshas Vayera, expect only of yourself. Our parsha begins with Hashem appearing to Avram Avinu just after having a circumcision, a bris milah. To ease his pain, God made the sun exceptionally strong, so therefore there would be no travelers for Avram to host and to bother him while he was healing. But after seeing how much it bothered Avram that he had no one to help, God sent three messengers, three angels in the form of men to visit him. As soon as Avram saw these three travelers, he quickly ran to them and brought them to his tent. He washed their feet and had them cool down in the shade while Sarah prepared three matzahs for the guests as it was the Yom Tif, it was the holiday of Pesach. Avram then sent his son Yishmael to slaughter three small calves for his guests to eat. And although Avram just had a circumcision of Rismila, he himself attended and took care of each traveler of each angel. One of one of the angel's jobs was to inform Avram and Sarah that they would have a son precisely in one year. And when Avram was told, Sarah, who was listening from a tent, began to laugh to herself. And she thought, it is physically impossible for her to have a child. But Hashem, but God, was not impressed with Sarah. And he turned to Avram and said, is there anything too difficult for me to do? I will return to you in one year at the same time, and Sarah will have a son. And therefore, when the baby was born a year later, he was named Yitzchak, which comes and stems from the root word in Hebrew for laughter, which is tzchik. However, a question comes to mind. The Torah details Avram's enormous feast for his guest. He slaughtered three separate calves just to serve their tongue to each of his guests. Yet when Avram first encounters them, he says, Please take a little water, clean your feet, and rest under the tree. Why does the Torah detail, Why take a little water rather than just say, Just take water. The Radak of David Kimchi, a biblical commentary from the 11th century, answers this question by explaining that Avram was an extremely humble servant of Hashem, of God. Hence, he would constantly downplay and minimize his generosity because it's all from God. And so therefore, he told the angels, take a little water to downplay and minimize the fact that they were about to have an enormous feast in the middle of the desert. Furthermore, Avram's most treasured mitzvah was having guests. As we know, his tent was open on all four sides to invite people in. And in fact, the character trait that Avram passed on to us till today is the midah, is the attribute of chesed of kindness. And so therefore, he wanted his guests to have no expectations for heaven forbid he fails to live up to them. However, Rabbi Soloveitchik of blessed memory, a descendant of the brisky rabbinic dynasty, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He repeats Rashi's explanation as to why Avram in the beginning want them to wash their feet. Rashi quotes the Gemara in Bab Metziah that explains that Avram had all his guests wash their feet if they worshipped idols. And since some people actually bow down to the dust of the earth, Avram made every person clean their feet before entering his tent. But when Avram said, please take a little water, Rashi explains that he was not talking to the angels, to the travelers, but rather to his avadim, to his servants. Meaning that Avram wanted water to be brought and then he said to the angels, Rechatsu raglechem, wash your feet. Rabbi Soloveitchik explains that Avram wanted only a little water because it was his servants who were bringing the water. And he did not want to burden them with carrying a significant amount of water so each angel can wash their feet thoroughly. And since Avram did not honestly know if these travelers, who were really angels, worshipped the dust of their feet, he only requested a small amount of water not to overwork his servants because of his doubts. But when it comes to his own actions, Avram went above and beyond the norm to treat his guests with his level of hospitality. He had three separate calves slaughtered just to give each angel and traveler a whole tongue, which was the best part of the animal at the time. 
He gave them matzah straight from the oven, and he gave them freshly made butter as the Pusik details. And he took butter, milk, and the calf that was prepared and set it before them, and he waited on them under the tree as they ate. Rabbi Soloveitchik learns from Avram not to presume that others are on the same level of piousness as we are. We cannot expect others to act on our degree of piety and holiness. Rather, we should teach others our outlook and our perspective and let them come to their own conclusion. In our daily life, it is imperative that we understand that expecting others to think and act like we do will lead to constant frustration in our daily life. Every person is going through their own journey with trials and tribulations shaping their worldview and opinions. But this singularity is what makes each of us precious, unique, and irreplaceable. And most importantly, this change of mentality will stop the cycle of disappointment in others when they fail to live up to your expectations. And this will rekindle your faith in the potential of every person to accomplish far beyond your imagination. There's an amazing quote that I once read. If you expect great things of yourself and demand little of others, you will keep resentment far, far away. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.